So in this video, we're going to take a look at using this uh, Siemens FDD 100-8 8 inch floppy disk drives on my uh, Altar 8800 using the FDC Plus floppy controller. So as I said, this is an 8 inch floppy drive. Uh, there's a little bit better picture of it here. It's, it's very large compared to a 5 and a quarter inch drive. Uh, we'll get a size comparison here a little later in the video. There's a pretty decent maintenance and service manual for it, along with a kind of an end user manual for jump ring and that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty comprehensive manual. You know, it's got some great drawings in, in this case of the head assembly and the little pad that pushes down, you know, the disc of the head, that kind of stuff. So that definitely having this manual helped how to make adjustments. Uh, it took quite a bit of work to get these two floppy drives. I've got two of them to actually work. I've got, I think, eight or nine actual 8-inch floppy drives. Uh, a Shugart, a couple of Shugart 800s, a couple of 801s. Uh, had all kinds of trouble with other drives before I finally decided to tackle these Siemens drives and actually ended up with something that works. Uh, if we keep scrolling through here, there's a great mechanical picture of the drive. Again, looking at the drive from the bottom, you, you know, the uh, motor pulley assembly to the spindle motor, kind of the view from the top again with the stepper motor that drives the heads in and out, the head, etc., etc. Pretty comprehensive manual. I mean, it really does get into a lot of details. Uh, ultimately, the fix for these occurred actually in a different video, and it was right down here, and I'm not sure this shows up very well. There's uh, tantalum capacitors in the system. And I had uh, four, two, two tantalum capacitors on each of the drives, same manufacturer, same capacitance and everything, that had failed. One of them is nearly a dead short, and the other one at, at, at a low resistance. And, and it, uh, you, you know, I had to pull those caps out. And right now, I just have electrolytic substituted in. I'll need to order some, some tantalums to actually replace them. Everything seems to work fine with the electrolytics, but uh, they were uh, axial tantalums which makes them rather expensive and I didn't have any axial electrolytics to swap in so I, I, it's kludge what I've done on the board we might capture a bit of this in the video when we jump over to look at the actual drive uh, this is a picture here I grabbed of how I ended up jumpering the Siemens drives to actually work with the uh, FDC plus so the FDC plus for each drives is uh, designed for hard sector floppies. So you've got 32 sector holes plus the index hole in the physical media. Uh, the drive could have a couple different options installed. There was a uh, what they call the hard sector option here. It's not installed in my drive and there was an FM decoder uh, section here for dealing with single density that again I don't have stuffed. It took a while to understand why there was this hard sector mod and what it literally does is can take the 32 pulses from the sector holes and divide them by two or four to get actually 16 pulses or eight pulses. Effectively turning the disc into a 16 sector disc or an eight sector disc. Uh, in, in this case, it, like I said, it's unstuffed. The SS and the 32 jumper are in place and that actually seems to allow the drive to work with either soft sector or hard sector floppies. I had to move the G jumper here down to H and that has to do with getting power to the stepper motor. Uh, I had issues where uh, some of the software we're going to use here wouldn't see the drive as uh, getting the head stick back to track zero. And ultimately I moved this jumper to H which basically says if the drive is selected send power to the stepper motor and that seems to then enable the track zero output to actually work correctly and got the software working. There's a similar thing in the in instructions if you're setting up a Shugart 800 drive in the uh, FTC Plus manual. Uh, just a note here, you've always got to have the last drive on the cable terminated, only that drive terminated. Uh, the manual seemed to indicate that for the activity LED on the front, the U and the S jumpers where the factory defaults, where this is on drive select, uh, radial load maybe, I'm not sure, and and head load. And for the, again, the FTC Plus manual for the uh, Shugart 800, he had you configured to uh, head load. I went to move this jumper and it had already been moved over here and it looked like it was factory. I didn't see any evidence a jumper had been unsoldered over here. 
So anyhow, uh, there, there's kind of a look at the jumpers. I only had to move the one. If you have one of these boards, you might find jumpers are, are different depending on uh, the last use for the drive. So now we're going to dump back down and look at a, t a couple of Terra Term consoles here. In this case, COM5 goes to TTY0 on the uh, Altar, and COM1 goes to TTY1. So TTY0 is where we're going to actually interact with the system, and I've simply got TTY1 hooked up, and we'll use that to move content uh, to the system. So I think with that introduction, we can come over here and kind of review the hardware over here and power things up. So the Altar has been turned on. Obviously, let me... Uh, try to move the camera around here somewhat gently. We've got the Altar hardware sitting back here. In this case I have the FTC Plus controller here on the front of the machine with the ribbon cable that comes out of the floppy drive. I've got an 882 SIOP card here. It gives me the two serial ports, TTY0 and TTY1. It's got a lot of other features on it that I'm not using at the moment. Or maybe they are. Uh, I'm not sure which card I'm running the monitor off of. Not that it matters, though, that the monitor's in the memory space. I've got a... Oh, I'm getting in the light here with my hand. Sorry about that. Over here, I've got a reproduction of the 8080 CPU card that we built up in a previous video. And then sitting in way behind that is the front panel interface card that comes over to this front panel. And again, this is kind of an emulation of the original front panel. Electrically on the machine bus, it, it acts identical to the original front panel. Uh, does correct a couple of the bugs they had in the original front panel, but that's the hardware side of the, of the computing platform. If we come over here, we can kind of get a view of the bottom of the 8-inch floppy drive, and, and sorry, the camera work here is so poor. Uh, this drive is huge. To give you an idea how big it is, there's a box of 5 and a quarter inch floppies kind of up against the drive, and you can see size-wise that drive is just monstrous. Uh, we can drop a 8 inch floppy in here behind the box and again on the camera you, you can see that floppy is just huge behind it. Uh, I don't have a lot of room here on the bench we're working on to get the camera actually in a good position. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the drive around I think and hopefully get the top of the drive somewhat in shot and like I say, I don't have a lot of room here to do this. Uh, actually, before we do that, we need to do something else. So on the Altar, I need to get into Amon. And the entry address for Amon is F800 hex. Let's do a reset and a run here. And we should see the Amon prompt come up over here in the terminal. And we kind of did. That's not exactly right. So this is an issue I've been having with TerraTerm. Let me close TerraTerm down and reopen it get it back here on the screen and let me set the font up again to something a little bit bigger. I've been running 14 bold just to make things a little easier to see in the video. And let's go ahead and stop, reset, examine, and run again. And we should get the Altmon prompt and we did over there. And you can see now the cursor's in the right place. So I've been having issues where with power up and power down uh, TerraTerm just loses somehow where the cursor should be, and I think it's a TerraTerm issue, though I'm not totally sure of that. So we're up and running at F800 here. Let's jump over now. Boy, it's hard to get things kind of centered here and square. Sorry for the squirrely camera work. Well, that's about as good as you're going to get. We're in Altmon. Actually, I need to uh, get a file explorer window opened here. We're going to go to my E drive. Altar 8800C, FDC Plus, 8 inch floppy, disk image transfer. We've done this in a, uh, an earlier video with the 5 and a quarter inch drives where we need to send this PC to flop hex file uh, to uh, the Altar. And we're going to do that in Altmon using the hex load. And in this case, I'm going to say 1 to use TTY1. And we're going to do a file, send file. We're going to send this as a text file. 8-inch floppy, disk image transfer. I want to take that PC to flop.hex file and we'll send it up. This is an Intel hex file. Altmon will parse this and get it loaded to the proper places in memory. Let's go ahead and send that up. 
and apparently I've got the baud rate too high. Uh, what is the baud rate on this real port currently? Yeah, 38400 baud. You just can't send that file up. It's too fast for the 8080 to react to. So we'll do this a little bit different. Let's do a hex load, and we'll actually do it. No, we're hung up. So let me get over here and reset and restart the monitor. So we need to stop, reset, examine, reset the monitor. Uh, this terminal session is set up at 19.2 baud. So we'll go ahead and send the, send the monitor up on, on this terminal here. So let's go ahead again and do a hex load, in this case from TTY0. File, send file. Actually, I need, well, we've got a whole bunch of jumping around here to do. It's on 5e. Altar. Got to find the FDC Plus folder. It's under 8 inch floppies. Disk image transfer. And again, PC to flop.hex. In this case, we'll see it upload correctly here, which it's doing. And if we scroll back up, we can see that the first address that, that got loaded on the machine was hex 0100. So the, the uh, PC to flop code starts there. And we can go ahead and run that code here by doing a go. 0100 hex and that'll actually start it running. You could also go to the front panel on the altar, stop the machine, examine that address and start it. So over here, now I need to power the 8-inch floppy drive up and it's a little loud. So you it, it will definitely be heard in the video. And let's go ahead and see if we can get the drive somewhat in shot here. I'm not sure how good a job we can do with this just because I can't get far enough away on the work surface I'm on here. But what you can see here is the uh, lead screw for the head. The head assembly is back in here. Let's go ahead and mount up the 8-inch floppy and close the door. And what you should see here when I send a file up is the heads are currently out here on track 77, the end of the disk. You should see the head step back as it starts to write, and then the head will go click, 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 and step forward. So uh, let's go back over to the TerraTerm session. And I'm going to go ahead and send. Well, the first thing we need to do is select the drive. And, and 0 to 3 is the same as A, B, C, D. I want to send this to drive 0. You just saw and heard the head step back. I'm going to send the file up through port B because it's set to 38400 baud. Uh, so I want to use option 2. It should tell us to do an X modem send. And if you watched before, you saw me do a send file. That just grabs a text file and just sends the text up. In this case, we want to do a transfer via xmodem send. xmodem will include handshaking so that you don't overrun the buffer. Uh, you, you know, it gives you better control over the, 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 the serial data transfer. We're up here the first time we tried it in this terminal. We overran the buffer and the upload failed. xmodem will take care of that. So let's get into CPM, CPM 2.2, and we have a CPM 48K disk, 56K disk, and a 63K disk image. I'm just going to grab the 48K. And what you should see here now is Xmodem got connected, so it's talking to the Altar. Uh, Data is being sent up. It's not writing to the floppy yet. I guess you really can't see any activity back here on the Altar. Oh, it's writing. Sorry for the lousy camera work here. So we just missed it, but uh, we'll try to get some better light in there. Lots of reflections. Yeah, sorry for the poor quality of the video shoot here. Uh, just don't have the bench space. There it goes. Heads are stepping again. So it's uploaded another block and it stepped the heads and wrote those. And this will just keep running here. It'll take a bit. Uh, there's about, th well, the, the file we're sending up, I believe, is 330K. So if we get to the CPM, CPM 2.2, yeah, it's a 330K file. So, you know, this disk can hold 330K of data, which on a 64K machine is a fair amount. The uh, five and a quarter inch disks that we did a similar process with in a much earlier video. I think held about 60k, and so the apparent transfer time was much quicker. So 
chugging along here. It's writing. We haven't had any errors yet. Uh, if I do get a write error, uh, the PC to hex will fail. Uh, you know, and we'll get an error message. Uh, the floppy disks I'm using are new old stock. As I was saying, they're new old stock 8-inch floppies uh, that were supposedly kept in a, you know, uh, controlled environment. Uh, I bought 10 of them. They were really inexpensive for what they are, hard sector disks. Uh, the guy had 20 more. I may go back and see if I can acquire those other 20 because I've had really good luck with these disks so far. So it's finished writing the image. We can come back over here to the Terraform session and we can see that, hey, I'm happy I created that disk. So uh, let's see now if we can actually get CPM to boot. So I'm going to move the disk out of the way here. I'm going to go ahead and stop the machine and we're going to reset it. And in the uh, monitor ROM I have in the machine, address FF00 is where the bootloader lives. So I'm going to set the address to FF00. I'm going to examine that as my start address and I'm going to run here. just no great way to do this. I'm going to run if we get focus back. And hopefully you heard the hard drive actually work there. So let's spin the drive back around so you can at least get a view into the mechanism. In Terra term we have the CPM prompt. Hey, here's CPM. I'm very happy. So we actually got a, a, a good enough uh, disk image on that disk to actually get CPM booted. And there's the files on the disk. We can do a stat and just see how much free space we have. This image is pretty full. So 32K free space. We've got MBASIC on here. We've got a few other programs. I can run a survey of my machine, of, you know, of my Altar here. And that's gone out and gave me information on drive A, 268K used. It walked through the system memory here. So this first block down here is where uh, some part of CPM lives, and I can't think of the name of it at the moment. Uh, TPA is the transient program area. That's where our programs load. So I'm starting at address 100. We have uh, CPM living up here. B is where the BIOS is living. And then finally, we've got that little 2K ROM up here at the top of memory. And I did a quick port scan and said there's active ports on the machine. But there are floppy disk controller and the two COM ports occupy of course ports on the machine but this is pretty sweet it's loaded uh, this disk is much faster than the little 60k five and a half inch uh, what else can we do here you know we can run M basic we're just trying to get the drive to do a few things we just had a large step of the heads to get out and load M basic Machines come back and said we have 18k of memory. Let's go ahead and do a system and get back to CPM. And let's do a move CPM. Uh, I think I can do 62k here. I'm going to convert this from a 48k CPM floppy to a 62k CPM floppy. And that is reading CPM off the machine, or off the floppy, and then doing the necessary pointers, uh, updates, and things in the image to actually get the machine into a 62K space. And then we can do a sysgen. And sysgen will allow me to then write that image back to the floppy. So by hitting just return here and not specifying a disk drive, I'm saying use the CPM image that's in system memory. I'm going to write that back to drive A. My destination disk is drive A. And it's done that. So I've done one of two things here. I've either made the system unbootable because CPM now thinks it has more memory than I, ac I actually have. Uh, but we should be fine. 64K of RAM. So let me go ahead and stop, reset, examine, run. And CPM was loaded and we've converted to 62K. Uh, memory. Uh, if I had 4K of ROM, this would fail because I wouldn't. I'd only have 60K of RAM. So we saw before for basic, 
we had 18k available uh, this should give us another what I oh, can't do the math here uh, 16k or so can't do math anymore getting old let's bring up M basic again we should see significantly more than 18k free yeah 32 K so yeah we added significant memory five uh, let's do an open oops for output file one test dot text 10 for x equals 0 to 1023 so it's going to loop 1024 times 15 print number one I want to be hello world I'm loop uh, quote and I'll put the value of X to the file 20 next X 25 close number one Let's see if that'll run this should open up a file on the disk uh, write that string out 1024 times including the the loop number on the end of it and close the file so let's see what this does let's open the file it's writing to it as it should be nope heard the head step You can see it's not super fast. Uh, it, it's a one megahertz eighty eighty. I think it just did an extend of the file to the second file allocation block for it, which is why the heads came back down and then back up. I do believe uh, these are one hundred and twenty eight byte sectors on the disk. There's thirty two of them per track. This is certainly writing more than 128 bytes. I believe the disk allocation size is four sectors per block. I don't remember for sure. Ah, oh, we filled the disk. Fun. Let's go ahead and, and get back to CPM. We should have test.txt hiding on there someplace, and we do. We can do a type test.txt. Nope. Test.txt, not text.txt. .text. We can get an idea just how far we got into this. Okay, and you can see the head stepping there as it reads back the file. At least you're somewhat capturing the meow. On the other camera, nope. So we're past halfway. I've got two of these Siemens drives, and they both work. They both have, like I said, the same tantalum capacitor issue. Uh, you know, the exercise you're seeing here is not the first time. Uh, exercising these drives. I've gone through this process several times here to get drives running. So this video was really meant, just meant to be a demonstration. Well, we got through 938 loops before it failed. We're back now where there's that weird issue where I'm not seeing the caret here. If I exit out, restart caret term, set up a font, make it nice and large so you can see it. Now it'll be back working again. I have no idea what's causing that, but uh, we can go ahead and erase the test.txt file we wrote. And there it is. Uh, I guess the last thing we can do here, just for uh, giggles, is we can go ahead and format a disk. I'm going to format the disk in drive A. 
just waiting for me now to mount a disc in drive A. Need to get enough room here to pull the CPM disc out. There's the disc we wrote. Got another blank one here to mount in the drive. See if I can get some of the glare off the altar. And maybe you can get a good view here of the LEDs as it talks to the drive. I'm going to go ahead and issue the full command here, which says do a full format of the entire disk. See, we'll continue. I don't know if it's showing up on camera or not. Trying to get centered images here has turned out to be really difficult. I'm actually using a mini vise to hold my phone at the moment. It might be a little bit better. I don't know if you're catching on the camera or not, but the stack out and INTE lights are actually blinking each time the track steps. And of course you can see the machine just looping here. So, uh, you know, we're going to be over 20 minutes of video at this point. So, uh, I think I'll just go ahead and wrap this up here. I hope this little demonstration was useful, and we'll talk soon.